How would you feel if I told you you can create this map in minutes? Stay till the end of the video to see exactly how I did it. So today we're going to be looking at high top down tile sets. This is going to be a fun video because you're going to be able to create a full map. I'm going to be covering how to create the tile sets, how to export them and how to import them to Godot pretty easily. So let's get right into it. So the first thing we're going to do is go to the map tools and to create tile set high top down. So this might seem overwhelming at first, but it's pretty easy to handle. So the first things we're going to see are the different tiles we're going to have in our tile set. So the higher elevation tile, the transition tile and the lower elevation tile. What does this mean? So in a tile set, you have a top tile and a lower tile, or let's say basically your main tile and your secondary tiles. And then the transition, which will be like a wall or something around that, right? Then we have the outline, shading and details like we have in most of our tools, which we can select, of course. We can do different outlines or we can do lineless. We can do flat shading up to high detailed shading. We can keep it basic for now. Or we can do low details to highly detailed. We can keep it low for now and let's do single color outline. So next up we have the transition size and this is what this is for. So you here you can choose none and when you choose none, you lose the transition tile text box because you're not going to use it. And then you have 0.25 tiles, which is going to be a pretty small wall. And then you have 0.5, which is like the standard wall you see in most games. And finally, we have one tile walls, which are pretty big walls, but this is still in beta. So it's not perfect yet. It's still in the works. So let's keep it 0.5. And then we have tile size. For tile size, we have 16 by 16 and 32 by 32. We're going to keep it 16 by 16 for now. And then I'll show you 32 by 32 so you can see both. Now, the next setting we have is tacit adherence. So tacit adherence, as you can read here, increase tacit adherence for more consistent tacit at the cost of quality. So the more tacit adherence you have, the more it's going to follow the shape of a standard tile set with the standard corners, etc. Freedom also changes this. So the more freedom, the less is going to follow that standard square tile set shape. And the less freedom, the more it's going to follow it. Also, one thing to note is that the tile set adherence setting if you have a tile set up here as an in initial image or as a reference tile for the higher elevation tile, transition tile, and lower elevation tiles, it will try to look more like those tiles. Next up, we have the target palette, which we can use no palette, our color palette, which will be here, or the current image if we have one. So let's try for the higher elevation tile. Let's try going with grass. For the transition description, let's keep it as rocks. And for the lower elevation tile, let's do dirt. So we can have a grass and dirt tile set. And let's just click generate. As you can see, I was in a 32 by 32 project. But as, as soon as you click generate, it makes the correct canvas size and it starts making the image in that canvas size and as you can see it's generating all the tiles and then it's going to merge them all together and give you a tile set just as you're seeing it right now happening live and there we have our grass with the rock walls and the dirt we have a full tile set now what if we want to use one of these tiles and generate extra tiles besides those, right? We could always select the grass tile and let's put it as the higher elevation tile. 
and let's keep that as the higher elevation tile. Then we can do rocks as transition description again. And then maybe we can do water for the lower elevation tile. We can maybe change the transition size to 0 0.25. And now it's going to use this grass tile and make newer rock tiles and new water tiles. So let's click generate. And there you have it. You have the grass with the water and it's still using the same grass tile as you can see. And the wall is smaller, right? So now you have two different tile sets with the same grass tiles, but different side tiles. You could basically make different environments with the same grass and basically have more consistency across your game. Before we move on to exporting tiles, let's try 32 by 32 tiles. I'm gonna try maybe sand as the higher elevation tile description. I'm going with none as transition size and I'm going with water as lower elevation. So let's make a small beach tile set. I'm gonna keep the tile set adherence at 100 or 101. Tile strength at 10, which is the default. And let's click generate. And as you can see, now it made it a 256 by 256 image instead of the 128 by 128 we had before because the tiles are bigger, twice the size. And there we have our sand with water tile set and just two word prompts. <laughs> so you can do 16 by 16 or 32 by 32. And now let's move on to exporting the tile sets. So when you are at the create tile set window, here at the bottom, you can see the export as tile set button. So when you click that, you will get a couple options for the target layout. If you click the drop down, you can export it as a tile set wang, which will export it as a JSON file. You can export it as a tile set 15, which uses 15 tiles. And then you can do a three by three, which is a Godot specific template, which has, I think, 43 tiles. But in this case, we're gonna do tile set 15. And you can also open it as a sprite just to preview it. So we can do that. And as you can see, for our grass and dirt tile set, this is the 15 tile. So this is one, two, three, four, etc. It goes 15 tiles. This is what we're gonna use to export it to Godot because we're gonna use a plugin called Dual Grid Tiles which makes it so easy to make a tile map in Godot. So I'm going to export this grass and dirt tile set and this grass and water tile set. And we're gonna create a small map with that. So let's do export as tile set 15, grass and dirt, boom. And then export as tile set, grass and water. Okay, so I'm here in Godot. I already made a 2D project. Just in case you haven't set this up, go to project settings, scroll down to rendering, click textures, and here where it says default texture filter, click nearest, just so your pixel art can be crisp. So you're gonna search dual grid Godot on Google, and you're gonna scroll a little bit until you find the GitHub link for the Pablo Gila Tile Map Dual. So this plugin allows you to make pretty nice and smooth rule tiles or auto tiles with this 15 tile setup. And I'm gonna show you just how to import it and do it really quickly. We're also gonna have the link of this below in the description, but if you want, you can always search it in Google. So the first thing you're gonna do here in the GitHub is click this code button and download it as a zip. Now that you've downloaded that as a zip, you can uncompress it, get to the folder, and you will see this add-ons folder. Here in the add-ons folder, you can see the actual plugin, which is Talmap Dual. In our project, or in my project, I already made an add-ons folder, but if you don't have an add-ons folder, you can just drag and drop the full add-ons folder to your project. 
if you do have an add-ons folder, you can just drag and drop the tile map dual to the add-ons folder. And as you can see, I have the tile map dual folder right here with the add-ons. And now that you've imported the plugin, you go to project, project settings, plugins, and you gotta enable the tile map dual. Now that you've enabled that, then now I'll start making the tile map. Let's import our tile sets. I'm gonna drag them into my tutorial folder. And here you can see the two tile sets. And now we're going to create a new tile map dual node in our scene. So we click create. Here we have the tile map dual. And the next thing we have to do is create a tile set. So here in the tile set, we create a new tile set. Here we have the tile map and the tile set tabs. Now we go to the tile set tab and we drag our grass and dirt tile set to this box. Here it asks you if you want it to automatically create the tiles. And we can click yes. And here it automatically cut it up perfectly. Now, if you go to the tile map tab and you go to terrains, you can see you have the two terrains already set up. You can start drawing your map. Here I'm drawing a little bit of the grass. Now if I click here, I can draw the dirt. Now, what do we do with this tile set, right? So same thing, we go to tile set, to the tile set tab. We drag the grass and water tile set, click yes. And we can go to tile map and we can just draw water. Look at that. So we can basically either have full fields of grass, right? Or we can have an ocean or a lake or whatever. And a small island, right? We can make an island right here, make it a little bigger. And we can start drawing some dirt paths. We can also draw some water inside, have some little lakes or rivers, right? And make it like connect to the ocean. You can get creative. Here also can do paths, etc. I think this is pretty powerful. You can really start making maps quickly. You can even maybe go and make a house and put it here. Let's try that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a tile set here in Aceprite out of these two tile sets or out of this layer basically. And I'm going to convert to tile map 16 by 16. And there we have the tile map so now let's expand this image to let's say 300 by 300 now i'm just gonna paint a little bit of a map just to have some context right or the model now i'm gonna go to the map tool and i'm gonna go to extend map and here we are going to in paint wherever we want the house so i'm gonna do a brush I'm gonna paint on the in painting layer. And I'm gonna paint some nice area for a house. There we go. Here, I'm gonna describe it. I'm just gonna say a house. Let's do high top down. Let's do selective outline, basic shading, low detail. So 16 by 16. And we're doing use selection tool to select painting area. So we're gonna select this area like so. As you can see, here's our in-painted area. And now I'm going to do the output method to new layer with changes. Let's click generate. I'm going to hide the in-painting layer just so we can see. And there we have a nice little house, perfectly consistent with the style of the tiles. It even gave it some shadows, but you can of course remove that. So how would I export this? I would hide the other layers and I would just come here and delete the background, right? Boom. And there we have it. We have a little house. Of course, we can make the canvas size smaller. So we can make it, I don't know, 64 by 64. Center it and ready to ship. We can export it and we can import it to our project and just drag it to our map. And there we have it. We have a nice house and a nice little map. You can of course always go back to a sprite and fix your sprites 
which is always a recommended thing to do. Or you can try to do new generations with this as a base. So we can maybe go to extend map again. And one more time using the selection tool, we select and click generate. I'm going to try to make a farmhouse this time. And there we have it. Another really nice farmhouse, keeping the style consistent with the map every single time. And of course, you can try to do other things like trees. Let's try that. So we could paint right here, write the description, maybe oak tree and select this. Or we could even select the house as well, just so it has more context of the map and click generate. And there we have it, a really cool tree fitting the map. If you like this video, make sure to leave a like, comment down below what you would like to see next, share this video with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of our videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.